Hey guys, Wes here. So I've had a lot of requests lately to revisit some ASP.NET Core 2.0. So this video series, we're gonna build out the architecture for a very basic sort of monolithic application in .NET Core 2.0. The main focus of this series is going to be on the architecture of such an application. So we're gonna look at, first of all, of course, how to create the app but then also sort of how to separate it into multiple projects um, so that we're sort of separating different parts of our application um, depending on their particular concern. So as far as the stack goes, we're gonna use a Postgres database to house our data, and then we're gonna use ASP.NET for our business logic and data handling layers. Um, the front end will build a simple Angular application, and we'll use Identity Server for doing things like membership, authentication, and some of the, the various security features. Hopefully then by the end of this series, we'll have a sort of general purpose architecture that we could use for any application where you'd like to implement this stack. Um, be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if any parts of the series need clarification, and I'll do my best to respond. Hey guys, so in this first video, we're gonna take a look at how I have my development environment set up um, with some of the dependencies that will be required to work through this project. So as I mentioned, we'll be using Postgres as our database, so we'll look at how to get that set up, and we'll make sure that we have the correct .NET Core 2.1 SDK and runtime installed as well. Then we'll take a quick look at how I have my editor set up. I'll be using Visual Studio Code throughout uh, most of this series probably, and I often get questions about how I have that configured, so we'll just take a quick look at that um, before we get started. Then we're gonna jump right into building the first part of our application, which will be actually building an STS or security token service using Identity Server 4. So what that's gonna allow us to do is to essentially have all of the code that is um, required for authentication and API access throughout our application um, in one project, in, in one service, um, working through Identity Server 4. And you can think of Identity Server 4 as a framework for building an STS. And what it does is it implements the OAuth 2 security protocol and OpenID Connect, which is sort of an extension of OAuth 2. So that's gonna allow us to do things like authentication and control API access using tokens. What's really nice about using Identity Server 4 is that it's really flexible in that it allows us to sort of store our user data in any type of database that we'd like and sort of using any other libraries um, that we, we might want to implement to uh, control and manage that data. So to that end, we'll be using Entity Framework Core as an ORM to interact with our Postgres database and we're also going to be using ASP.NET Identity to sort of manage all of the uh, sort of user roles and identities um, that we're gonna have in our application. So we'll look at how to get all that wired up and we'll also talk um, a little bit about the benefits of having um, an STS or so sort of a centralized token service for use in um, a large application or really any, any type of application where we might have multiple projects each of which need to have uh, authentication and access granted for the same user base. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we'll make sure that we have installed is the .NET Core SDK, and we'll also install the .NET Core runtime. So for this series, I'll be using the 2.1 SDK and runtime. So just head over to microsoft.com slash net slash download and go ahead and download .NET Core for whichever platform you're using. So I'll be using Mac OS over the course of this series, but again, .NET Core is cross-platform, so just go ahead and download whichever version your system requires. Then we'll head over to postgressql.org, and we're gonna go ahead and download 
the binary package again for whichever operating system that you'll be using. And so we'll use Postgres as our database throughout the entire series. Next, later on in the series, we are going to be working on a front-end application using Angular. And so just in order to prepare for that ahead of time, go ahead and download Node.js if you don't have it on your system already. And I'll be using version 10.3.0. We'll cover this again when we get to the video where we'll be building out our front-end application. And then finally, just go ahead and have, you know, use the editor of your choice, but I'll be using Visual Studio Code throughout this series. Again, it's a cross-platform editor and it's pretty lightweight and overall it's a pretty decent editor for working in ASP.NET and c -sharp projects. So I've got Visual Studio Code open here and the next thing that I'm going to do is just briefly go over the preferences that I have set up on my machine. So to see them you can actually just con command comma or control comma and on the left side you'll see the sort of uh, default settings and on the right side you can see your user settings that you'd like to customize. So I'll be using uh, Base 16 Dark Oceanic Next for my color theme. Um, we'll probably bump the font size up here a little bit just to increase visibility um, for the series. And then um, you can see the rest of what I have here. So I'm turning code lens off and turning off that mini map. Next, the terminal that I'll be using um, since I'm on OSX here is I'm going to be using iTerm2 with Z Shell. But again, this should work uh, cross platform, so just go ahead and use a um, terminal emulator of your choice. If you're on Windows, I might recommend checking out Commander. So, this is a portable console emulator for Windows um, that's pretty popular, and it is the uh, console emulator that I use when I'm working on a Windows machine. Otherwise, feel free to use PowerShell or Command Prompt. It's just really a matter of preference. Um, we won't be working too much at the command line, but we will be doing very basic things like creating directories and that sort of thing. Okay, so with some of the basic setup out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in and create our fir the first part of this application, which will be our identity server for security token service. So I'm gonna head over to the command line and I've already moved into my projects directory. And so we can first of all check that the .NET Core CLI is um, working correctly for us. If we just .NET and then we can dash dash version here. And you can see that I'm using 2.1.105. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually install some templates that Identity Server 4 has provided for us. And these are just gonna help us kind of bootstrap a new Identity Server 4 application. So to install those, I can .NET new, dash I for install, and we're gonna install identity server 4.templates. And so these are already installed on my machine, but you can see that we're just going to restore the packages and it's gonna fetch them. And now they're installed. And you can see that it also shows us now all the different templates that we have available um, with the .NET CLI that we can go ahead and sort of bootstrap or scaffold out a new application depending on whatever type we'd like to create. So the ones that we just installed here are this set of five or six identity server four templates. These are kind of nice. You can see that they set us up with some sort of basic configuration. So if we know we'd like to use ASP.NET Core Identity, we can start a bare bones project or um, use Entity Framework, or one that has in-memory stores and test users, and that sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do is, within my projects directory, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new directory, and we're just gonna call this archblog. Um, and so I'll go ahead and create this. And so the focus of this series is really gonna be on architecture, but in order to sort of illustrate that point, we can create a very bare bones sort of CRUD application. And so for that, I think it suffices to perhaps create a blog application to sort of illustrate that point, even though, again, the focus is gonna be more on how we kind of set up um, a general purpose web application. So we can go ahead and change directories into the new Arch blog directory. And then what I'm gonna do is create a new directory within Arch blog and we're just going to call this arch.is4host. And then we'll go ahead and cd into that directory when it's created. 
So this just stands for Identity Server for Host, and this will be the first application that we'll be building in our project. So you know we have those new templates that we just downloaded. And in fact, if you'd like to see them again, we can just .NET new, dash dash help, and you can see them all again. So we're going to go ahead and .NET new IS4 ASP ID. And so you can see that's going to scaffold out an Identity Server 4 project with ASP.NET Core identity. And we're going to say no to run this uh, initial user database. And then if we list out what we have in this directory, we can see that we have a bunch of stuff now that the template has provided us with. So in general, just to back up a little bit, what Identity Server 4 is, is essentially a framework for implementing a security token service or sometimes referred to as an STS. So we're going to use this framework to help us build an STS that acts as a sort of centralized identity service for any other services in our or applications in our project. And so what an STS does is it creates these tokens and we pass those to the different applications that require some type of authentication or access control to validate the ID of some user. And these tokens are used by the applications to call the API. So Identity Server issues these JSON web tokens and um, basically uh, modern security protocols um, define how they're used. So Identity Server 4 implements the OAuth 2 security protocol as well as OpenID Connect, which is just an extension of OAuth. And so these security tokens essentially contain some information about a user that are digitally signed by our STS. And so this service will be sort of like this central um, place where all the code concerning all of our authentication and API access lives. And this is going to be really nice so that we don't have some duplicate authentication codes scattered throughout um, maybe multiple applications that make up a single product or a project um, as that project grows over time. And so something to keep in mind as we move forward with this with this uh, particular aspect of the project is that the STS really addresses two primary concerns, um, authentication and API access. So authentication is really what is required for an application to know the identity of some user. So if you're logging in um, to say check your email or logging into your profile on some service, then of course you'll be required to authenticate yourself so that the application says, okay, the person logging in here is who they say they are. There are a number of different authentication protocols out there. There is something called WS Federation and uh, SAML 2P and OpenID Connect. So what we'll be implementing here again is OpenID Connect. It's actually the newest protocol of those three and is sort of considered to be the most modern option. Second, we have our API access concerns. And so the OAuth 2 protocol is what allows applications to request access tokens from some STS and use them to communicate with APIs. We'll talk about each of these in more detail as we actually start building out our application and the various clients that might implement it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is install a few NuGet packages into our project. Um, the first being Entity Framework Core and Entity Framework Core Design, um, which kind of goes along with it here. So we'll .NET add package, Microsoft Entity Framework Core, and I'm explicitly using version 2.1.0. Next, I'll add a package, Microsoft Entity Framework Core Design version 2.1.0 as well. So Entity Framework Core is, um, or it can be used as an ORM for .NET Core projects. And it's essentially going to be our storage mechanism for the data that Identity Server 4 needs. So we're going to be storing that data as well as other data um, that we generate and use throughout our project in a Postgres database. So what we're going to do is add a dependency here, a package called npg sql.entityframeworkcore.postgresql version 2.1.0. This is going to allow Entity Framework to uh, communicate with a Postgres database specifically. Likewise, this also has a design package, and I'm going to be using 2.0.0-preview1 for this. 
Next, just to verify, I'm going to go ahead and install three packages related to Identity Server 4. So those being Identity Server 4 itself, and I'm using version 2.0.0 for this, and Identity Server 4.Entity Framework, which is a nice package that actually allows us to use Entity Framework as our storage mechanism with Identity Server 4. And also we're going to be installing the ASP.NET Identity Package for Identity Server 4, which will help us manage um, you know, the identities of our users, our user roles, and that sort of thing. Okay, and so finally what I'm going to do is install this package Microsoft.CodeAnalysis version 2.8.2. This is just because sometimes I'm getting a warning that this package um, isn't found and uh, in fact sometimes installing this doesn't even solve that but sometimes it does. So we'll see if it works this time um, but we'll go ahead and install that just in case. Okay, so now what we can do is run .NET Restore and this is going to restore all of those packages for us in our project and then if you're on Windows I believe you can just code dot to open Visual Studio Code in this directory otherwise um, just head over to Visual Studio Code and we'll go ahead and open that folder.